Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new segment of What to Teach, where I share with you talking points you can discuss with your Bible study groups. Today, we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-11 through 11, in session 9 of Explore the Bible. Let's start with a recap. In last week's study, we discussed the wrong way and right way to suffer. The wrong way is to continue in sin and experience the consequences of it. However, the right way is to follow Jesus. When we commit our lives to Christ and suffer for following Him, God brings purpose and dignity to our suffering because He uses it to conform us into the image of His Son, Jesus. This, by far, is the best way to suffer instead of for our own failings. As we reach the end of Peter's letter, Peter is going to give a final word of encouragement on how the body of believers can maintain unity during the fight against the devil, which we'll discuss in this week's Talking Points. In verses 1-5, through five, Peter gives a job description for elders, who are the ministers of the church, and to the youngers, who are the congregation. Peter uses the analogy of a minister and his church are like a shepherd and the, his flock of sheep. Christ is the chief shepherd who has oversight of the entire flock of sheep, but he puts in place ministers who act as the sheep dogs, which lovingly protect the flock out of obedience to their master. If you're a member of a church, you know you have a good minister when they view their position as a sheep dog to lovingly protect and serve you, instead of using their position as an opportunity to gain power, status, or financial means. As a church member, your job is to follow the leadership of Christ and his sheepdogs, and here is why. In verse 8, Peter reminds us to be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. If you've ever watched lions hunt, you know they don't go after the adults. Instead, they go after the young ones by isolating them from the pack. Likewise, the devil seeks to physically, emotionally, and spiritually kill Christians and he accomplishes his goal the same way a lion hunts, by causing confusion and chaos among the body, which isolates the members so they can be devoured. The easiest way for the devil to cause isolation within the body is by turning the sheepdogs in the flock against each other, and the devil's job becomes that much easier when the weight of persecution and suffering is at its heaviest. Peter knows this because as a witness to the sufferings of Christ, he has personally seen how Satan works against the body of believers. And because of this, he reminds the church to stay unified by understanding and following their role as either a minister or church member. With that said, as teachers, we need to make good, solid application from our lessons. A Bible study isn't complete until our groups know how to apply the lesson to their lives. So here's what I've learned from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. To continue along the theme of elders and youngers, Peter presents the idea that with age comes maturity, and with maturity comes leadership and responsibility within the church. Keeping this attitude in mind fights against the mentality of believing we are the ones who should be served due to our life circumstances, not the other way around. Since we are always older than someone in our church, that means we have the opportunity to always invest in the next generation. Senior adults have the capacity to serve children, youth, young adults, and medium adults. Medium adults have the capacity to serve children, youth, and young adults. Young adults can serve children and youth, and so on and so on. The modern church has developed the mentality that the older we get, the less we do, and this mentality is wrong. Don't ever let your age be the reason why you can't serve, because it only teaches, models, and encourages the mentality of what Christ can do for me, instead of what I can do for Christ. I hope you enjoyed this segment of What to Teach. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to add them in the comment section below. If you believe this video is helpful and would benefit other teachers or the people you lead, like it and share it with them. And make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can receive up-to-date videos on what to teach for future lessons. Hope you all have a great week and may our God use you in a mighty way as you teach His Word this Sunday.